Greetings, proxies, and welcome to another episode of Mistakeless Zone Zero, your weekly dose of our lives and the commissions within them. Oh, man. I'm your video store manager, Jaron Wade. Joining me, as always, the wise man, Matt Alba. Hey, Matt. Yo. <laughs> How have your adventures in Hollow Zero been this week? Oh, man. Jaron, <laughs> my Hollow Zero adventures were bad. That, mm-hmm. since I'm looking at our show notes, you know, our show rundown, because we're trying to be semi-professional at the mm-hmm. very least. Mm-hmm. I see three familiar letters, and I believe in the last five weeks or so, this might be the fourth or mm-hmm. third episode to contain uh, Zemo Zone Zero. So might as well rebrand. Might as well mm-hmm. rebrand because that's what the kids are into, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming the kids are also still into Genshin more so. So we should probably talk about Genshin at some point. But no, no, Jaren, I don't, I don't want to start <laughs> Genshin. Matt, mm-hmm. recently, I guess I should have PSA'd this last week, but... For their, I believe, four-year anniversary for Genshin Impact, they did give you mm-hmm. a five-star selector character, um, or at least a selector, you know, giveaway, and you can pick one of, I believe, several characters. And I know the other week I logged in just to redeem the voucher and pick my free character and Matt. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know we say this a lot on the Mistake Zone, but sometimes you can't go back home and. <laughs> Uh-huh. I don't know what it is, but re-logging into a service game that you dedicated, you know, Saturday morning lore, Mistake Zone lore, I've said it countless times, mm-hmm. that you dedicated so much play time and effort into and step away for, let's say, three years. <laughs> Just step <laughs> back into that and see the characters you have and just walk around a bit, use every, all their skills, and think, mm-hmm. can't do this anymore. There's that sickly tummy feeling, and I had to log out right away and go back to the current hotness, which is on the Zone Zero. Oh, and man. Matt, mm-hmm. I think we'll save that a little later. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But this week, I wanted to tell you something. Uh, okay. On brand for the Mistake Zone... Other than on the Zone Zero, it's not. Mm-hmm. We're not young boys anymore. <laughs> the classic, the classic. And I gotta tell you that this week I was within the vicinity of the Saturday Morning Arcade Clubhouse once again, just because we went to a concert last Friday mm-hmm. at in Toronto Scotiabank Arena for Fred again, the DJ music producer, and he did a show where. For us, we sat in the 300 level, you know, four rows from the wall. So, you know, that's how far Mm -hmm. back we kind of were. Uh, Not necessarily the nosebleeds, but uh, the upper bowl. Mm -hmm. And Matt, Mm -hmm. as someone who went to his fair share of concerts and festivals in his heyday, Mm -hmm. I only recently... I guess I don't want to say discovered, but I recently uh, finally succumbed to actually acting responsible and using earplugs where uh, that Mm -hmm. again, years of going to concerts, to music festivals, I may have (laughs) a slight ringing ever present in my ears. Oh no. Uh, And I'm really glad that when we went to Fred again, great show, by the way, um, that I did have the earplugs this time around because Matt, mm-hmm. the bass was crazy. Where <laughs> I, this was probably the first time that I can ever recall in a concert experience where the bass I could feel the bass in mm-hmm. my throat, and oh. I feel like if I didn't have my earplugs, I probably w- that ringing that's ever present in my ear would be even more so. If I didn't have the earplugs. So Mm -hmm. luckily, Matt, Mm -hmm. I had um, those earplugs in my inner jacket pocket because the next day we went to a IMAX screening of the new Joker movie. And I'm not going to bore our listeners, our friends uh, Uh about Joker to uh, fully ado, but Matt, 
Mm-hmm. Luckily, still wearing the jacket from the night prior, reached into my uh, inner pocket, took out the earplugs because Matt, <laughs> I haven't been to an IMAX movie in a while, but IMAX movies are too loud for my old man ears now. Oh, man. And when that initial IMAX drop happens and you realize, oh, wait, this is too loud for me, popped in the <laughs> ear uh, plugs and somehow the new Joker movie was a bit more <laughs> enjoyable because of that. Uh, but oh, that, man. Mm-hmm. This is a PSA to all our friends out there. You should really consider your earplugs, especially for concerts. You should be wearing mm-hmm. earplugs to concerts or you can be like me where sometimes insomnia hits uh, for the worse and you're just listening to the ringing in your ears. But mm-hmm. not. Mm-hmm. Old man, Jaren, this out of the way. What have you been up to this week? Jaren, you know, I think that um, I'm I'm reaching back into youth. Because, Jaren, I've been uh, loading myself up on uh, sugary sugary drinks and sugary foods. Oh, man. Not, mm-hmm. I say this as a your friend and a fellow old man. That's mm-hmm. a slippery slope right now. <laughs> oh, man. Jaren, I I have indulged in uh, some promotional uh, foodstuffs. Would you say uh, collaborations of sorts? One is a collaboration. One is just you, I mean, you know that kind of like exclusive flavor thing where uh, you know you you got to try it to to you know see what's up because you know it seems. Interesting on the surface. I guess they both seem interesting on the surface, so you kind of want to try them. Okay. And, Jaren, the first of these two things is the Strawberry Milkshake Frosted Flakes. Okay. Not- Jaren? Mm-hmm. This is from our boy Tony, correct? Yes, our boy, our boy Tony has taken his Frosted Flakes and covered them in basically powdered Nesquik. <laughs> Uh, or a powdered well, Nesquik equivalent. When you say strawberry milkshake, I mm. don't immediately think of Nesquik. I mean, I, I wouldn't immediately think of Nesquik. To be honest, if I think of a strawberry milkshake, I feel like I think of McDonald's. Yes. I also mm. think of McDonald's because I love living in a society <laughs> that feeds off brands. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Jaren, this... <laughs> this... I'd, okay. I don't, this is going to make me sound very old man. Okay. But the strawberry milkshake frosted flakes has too much sugar. <laughs> Told you, Matt's slippery slope right now. Jaren, I think that my problem with the strawberry milkshake frosted flakes is that they didn't tone down the frosted flakes when they added the strawberry milkshake. It's oh, like. Mm-hmm. Right. Because. So normally frosted flakes are, you know, coated in what are frosted flakes coated? It's, it's like just frosted like, it's like icing, icing sugar. Yeah, basically. icing sugar. Where I thought that would just fully be replaced with, you know, the Nesqu- you know, the strawberry Nesquik or mm-hmm. whatever the equivalent is, but you're saying they took your flakes, unfrosted flakes, mm-hmm. and then sort of Mix them with both the sugar frosting and the strawberry frosting, or yes. strawberry sugar. Yes, I think that is exactly what happened to these frosted flakes. That, mm-hmm. that, that's making my teeth hurt just <laughs> listening to it, Jared. It's so like sickeningly sweet, <laughs> but Jared. Okay, so the reason I said it's like Nesquik is because yes. you know. As a result of, you know, whatever you put into milk, it's going to make the thing, the milk, like, taste like whatever it is. Fair. And this makes a very good strawberry milk when you're done oh, with the, the frosted okay. flakes. Okay, Matt, mm-hmm. is this less a cereal for consumption and more so a ingredient to make cereal milk? <laughs> yeah, Jared, this is <laughs> this is very much... <laughs> A, you know, I think what you want to do ideally is, you know, put this in one of those like like a cheesecloth or a you know those a like press. uh yeah 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 like a French press or like you know one of those like you know like those kind of like um little strainer things that you can put loose tea into and then you yep. put it into a, into a cup. 
Matt, I feel like us describing putting <laughs> strawberry milkshake frosted flakes in a fresh prince press is probably <laughs> super insulting where someone right now is furious at us. Oh man. See the nice thing is that you can, you know, then eat the the the, the cuz you know, you have to throw away the grounds when you make actual coffee in a french press. This yes. way, you can you can eat the the soggy frosted flakes at the end. Realistically, would you though, Matt? Would you want to eat them afterwards, or are they just essentially uh, coffee grounds at that point? They're, they're essentially coffee grounds. Jared, I think that like as a brand, frosted flakes become are like the worst one to let sit in terms yes. of cereals. Where growing up, I've had my fair share of you know Tony <laughs> the Tiger's frosted flakes, mm-hmm. and. It's the similar with any flake-based cereal. I don't know why the phrase or the term flake-based cereal disgusts me so much uh, the moment it left my mouth. But when I think about Frosted Flakes and Corn Flakes and I guess Special K or whatever variant of Corn Flakes there are, Mm -hmm. it has such a short milk life where I need to instantly eat those. That, what I'm saying mm-hmm. is when I want sugary cereal, I want to make sure it's super processed so mm-hmm. it holds a bit more firm than your flake <laughs> because I don't like a soggy flake in that. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jaren, the when I when I bought the cereal, it was like two for six dollars. So, so I also Fair. bought Cap'n Crunch, which I feel like is the opposite safe. end of the uh, the soggy, soggy, crunchy uh, it, spectrum. It's safe, but not... Have, mm-hmm. have you broken to the box of uh, Captain Crunch as well? Yeah, yeah. I, I had a bit of both. Uh, first question, how are, how's the roof of your mouth? It's, uh, Jaren, you know, I, I've gone through my years of eating Captain Crunch. So, you know, I, I know, I remembered how to eat Captain Crunch. Fair. You know, it's, it's like riding a bike. Once Once you get that mouth, get like that first spoon in your mouth, you're like, oh, I need to, I need to move all of this into my cheeks. Now, when, because I I too have partook in a buy two for X amount of price cereal, and mm-hmm. one being a favorite, or at least something that's safe, and the one the other always being the experiment, you know, the mm-hmm. first time try, mm-hmm. where I have, you know, I can't tell you uh, the specific memory right now, but I have mm-hmm. the recollection of me not feeling the experiment by and then using mm-hmm. the safe buy as a mixture to kind of <laughs> offset the experiment mm. where I have to ask Matt, uh-huh. mm-hmm. does strawberry uh, milkshake frosted flakes mix well with Captain Crunch? Jaren, I don't know. I'll let you, I'll let you know uh, on next week's episode of the mistake zone. Cause I haven't Fair given enough. that a try yet. Okay. But Matt, you did mm-hmm. try something else in mm-hmm. your taste test. That, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What else have you bought in partaking in? Jaren, I have um, partook in the Oreo Coke. The current trend going around, Matt, I feel mm-hmm. bad. Uh-huh. <laughs> because I told you I too would partake in the Oreo Coke. And uh-huh. <laughs> I apologize because I haven't partook in an Oreo Coke. Because Matt, mm-hmm. I feel like... Every t- where I've seen it, the mm. price point for one, let's say, a small bottle is disgusting where I'm at. Oh, so I see. I, I couldn't bring myself to pay that much for that little beverage. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But Matt, mm-hmm. I, I've heard many talk about this, but only one mm-hmm. opinion matters here <laughs> in the mistake zone. Matt, how's the Oreo Coca-Cola? Jaren, I think that for me, it's only okay. Mm. Which I the Coke think Zero, for it, uh, variety, correct? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Which I think is probably fine because of every other Coke variety I've had, I've not liked. Fair. Not a Coke guy. No, Jaron. I I like Coke in general, but I think right. like when I go for like you know the Coke experiment flavors, I mm. tend to not like them. <laughs> more hits, more misses than hits. I I feel that. I feel that. Yeah, yeah. I think for me the Coke Oreo or the the Oreo, f- wait, I don't know how to process this word. The Oreo flavored Coke, yes, is the best. Um, like of the recent um kind of like Coke 
flavor or Coke experimental flavors. Right. Because I, Jaren, mm-hmm. typically, I'm trying to think of the last Coke experiment flavor I had, which I believe was the Coke coffee or the coffee Coke. And yes, mm-hmm. I haven't seen those in a good while, but I actually was a really big fan of coffee Coke. I never got to try that one, Jaren. Like, is it? I I think okay. Is it like a just normal coffee flavor, or is it like a um, like a latte kind of coffee flavor that gives it more body? I guess is what I was wondering. So there were two variants that I tried, like your normal one, and then I believe it was either a caramel one. Mm. And mm. when you first drink into, from what I recall, because this was probably a year ago or so, mm-hmm. uh, you do have that brisk, that snappiness, that fizziness right away that gives you that initial Coke taste. But then it, you're, you're hit with that carbonated coffee after taste where it isn't necessarily a strong Coke taste. It more so teetered towards carbonated coffee, which I personally preferred. And then say the caramel Mm -hmm. uh, variant, you know, you did have the caramel taste. So it was, it did feel less like a soft drink and more like a coffee, if that makes sense. And I think that's why I ultimately preferred it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jaren, okay. So I guess like going back to the Oreo Coke, I think that if you liked vanilla Coke, and you also like, you know, chocolate, you're probably going to like the uh, Oreo Coke. Because that is, in in essence, what it is. It is a vanilla Coke with a, like, back flavoring of chocolate. Would this, does this work less of a, you know, soda beverage and more so as a addition to a float, like a vanilla float? I think this would actually go pretty well with a vanilla float float mm-hmm. um kind of like in the same way that like you know like a vanilla coke would go well with a vanilla float right B- but jaren i personally was never much of a fan of the vanilla coke mm. which is why like i think that like this is like not hitting for me as as well as uh it did for everybody else fair i personally was a fan of vanilla coke man i mm-hmm. typically do like uh coca-cola flavor or experimental flavors Mm-hmm. Uh, but ha- again, haven't had one in a while. So I'm curious. Maybe I'll try to find one this weekend and stomach mm-hmm. the overpricedness in this oh, area. But... Jared, if you want to swing by the Saturday morning arcade clubhouse, I have like <laughs> one mini can left if you want to take oh. it. Okay. May- that might be in the mm-hmm. area in the near future. So that might be mm-hmm. on the horizon. But mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. you know what else is on the horizon? What's that, Jared? A hollow, Matt. Uh-huh. Let's just get into it. Zen Zone Zero, we didn't talk about it last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there was a recent update that introduced Chapter 4, I believe. And yes. there are two events running right now. I'm not sure if you did the sliding puzzle that was introduced today. but uh-huh. <laughs> not- It's not even a sliding puzzle. <laughs> yeah, it's... I, at first, I thought it was a sliding puzzle, and I thought, man, I hate sliding puzzles. But mm-hmm, this mm-hmm. is essentially, hey, let's select elements of a photo and switch them around, where there's yeah. four days of difficulty. It's only day one right now at the time of recording. So I'm going to assume it gets more difficult, and you know, yeah. it won't stay a three by three. Uh, but essentially, they give you a photo. It's kind of mixed up, and then you pick two pieces, and then you switch them when you know they're selected. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you create the photo. Uh-huh. But if they introduce, you know, bigger, I guess, puzzles and maybe even rotating pieces, that might actually add some difficulty. Ooh, but for yeah. now, it's pretty okay. But Matt? Yeah, i kind of just been making my own uh, difficulty there. Just by, yeah. you know, you have that button that shows you the actual photo. Right. Which I think makes it way too easy. Yeah, way too easy. <laughs> so I've just been trying to be like, oh, I, I wonder if this one goes here or not. That, that sounds mm-hmm. fun. But you know what <laughs> I've been having fun with in Zenless Zone Zero? What's that, Jaren? In a lot of the... When I say a lot, maybe a handful uh, of, you know, mobile games, free-to-play mobile games. Mm-hmm. Every now and then they'll introduce some sort of mini game, And 
recently due to the you know popularity the success of vampire survivors and the bullet heaven or the survivors like genre we have seen some of these come to these mobile games uh me personally i'm familiar with nikkei's um whatever their survivor equivalent is and Mm -hmm. that has recently come to zone the zone zero and that Mm -hmm. this is your you know survival light this auto shooter uh and i'm currently stuck on trying to finish challenge level five but Mm -hmm. i've been playing this way more than i probably should (laughs) i haven't touched chapter four yet at all so Uh Uh how do you feel about uh zone zone zero survivor minigame jaren i think it's fun but it has a lot of like or one very strong thing I dislike about it that makes it so frustrating for me to play. What's up, Matt? Jamin, I think the thing that I don't like about Bizarre Brigade is the randomness of the shop. Yes. That, like, the... I guess, like, that also combined with how some items are, like, make or break the build. And I feel like if I don't have like key items by wave three, I just restart the yep. um like restart the round. Because I feel like there's no point in continuing. So with Bizarre Brigade, you do have what is it, you know, two dozen or so characters. You know, you only have one unlocked at the first. And as you, you know, start completing rounds, start completing difficulties with certain characters, doing certain mm-hmm. requirements, you'll start to unlock different characters each with their own you know passives Mm -hmm. and as you play through what i do give it uh bizarre brigade is the rounds are relatively short usually it is 10 rounds uh each of them being around 30 to i think a minute at most and it's up to you to survive the waves of enemies every three or so rounds there's going to be a boss character Mm -hmm. and you they drop money chests and in between rounds you can use sub money or even diamonds to buy different buddies i guess just because you don't Mm -hmm. have weapons per se you hire different i guess characters or they're not bang boos or whatever but you Mm -hmm. add to your bizarre brigade as the name implies, and they Mm -hmm. are the ones who are mostly attacking for you, even though you attack as well. And I feel like with some of the passives, especially when you start off where they don't have any of the candy drops that I believe give you some buffs, correct? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. The candies give you like permanent character strength, I guess. I feel like some, as to your point, Matt, some characters' passives really are pretty unforgiving on top of having no candies to buff their stats if you don't get your weapons or you know key characters or even passives right away in the shop Mm -hmm. yeah it's a dead run there matt where i would i'm not sure if they do plan to flesh it out or even if this disappears by the end of the event but i think some way to mitigate that randomness of what you get maybe some sort of section that maybe not banishing them or saying hey these are my preferred items or something like that Mm -hmm, something mm -hmm. to help some meta aspect to help you get what you want to make your runs more consistent just because matt Mm -hmm. i feel like for me personally there are only like three or four characters that i personally found viable and maybe i'm just not good at video games okay (laughs) scratch the maybe Mm -hmm. i'm not good at video games and that might be my issue here but Mm -hmm. i'm still having Mm -hmm. fun with it i think it's really charming it did take me a few a run or two to kind of get used to it just because i still have survived uh vampire survivors and hollow cure on the brain Mm -hmm. but i do hope that since we are recent uh, Zenless Zone Zero players that not only does this minigame stay, but that the Goldfinger, whatever arcade, you know, periodically gets new mini games, which I think mm-hmm. would be really cool. And Matt, sometimes I'm just waiting for my energy to recharge. And if I can <laughs> go to the arcade, I think that's a good mm-hmm. uh, way to scratch that want to be in this world itch. 
But, uh-huh. uh, anything else from Zenless Zone Zero, Matt, from your recent, uh, the recent update or just your recent play th- uh, playtime? I mean, Jared, I, I want to still keep uh, <laughs> diving into Bizarre Brigade because fair, fair, fair. for the rest of the stuff in Zenless Zone Zero, like the Tour to Inferno, um, I think you haven't touched yet, right? Nope. Like, okay, Tour to Inferno, I thought was like a very fun story. I like all of the Sons of Caledon and they're all, you know, really a fun set of characters the follow-up event of cheesetopia i absolutely hate it is that a time limited event uh i believe it is a time limited event i don't have it in my event maybe i just need to play through the story mode maybe i'll get to it this week yeah i think it doesn't prompt you about it until you're done the um tour to inferno okay maybe i'll do that this week matt uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, but yeah uh go on yeah, but but Jaren, going back to to Bizarre Brigade. Yes, Jaren, I wanna I wanna dive a little bit into this because I also think that Bizarre Brigade, like you know, minus the kind of flaw that I mentioned before of you know needing a build, which I think is really just caused by the fact that you don't preserve items in the same way that you um, preserve items in a lot of like other games, which starts yeah. to limit your randomness pool. I I do kind of like the game, and Jeremy, you mentioned that you know you're you have some characters that you you like to stick with, yep. And I, I'm wondering, Jeremy, what characters you like because I I I'm wondering if they're the same characters that uh, I like. Matt, hmm. I do think Bizarre Brigade has a lot of fun characters. I think visually they're all pretty fun, but mm-hmm. the characters I've finished difficulty four with are you know. The classic, the tried and true, your first character, Mr. Work. Not mm. just something about Mr. Work <laughs> resonates with me. So it took him to difficulty four. Mm-hmm. Uh, my first difficulty four was with Gulpy. And then my second one was Bloom Shell. I think right now I'm also speaking about resonating, trying to make Sassy Senior work and Card Queen work. Oh. Uh, yeah. But Card Queen Card Queen's a rough map. Card, Card Queen's rough. rough. Card Queen's rough, yeah. And I think what's his name? Sort of the samurai monk guy, I think Gallant or something. But oh, tr- trying to make him work as well. I couldn't figure out how to like conceptually, he's the one where um when you buy a companion, they you don't get a companion, it just adds their stats to you. Yes. Is that the one? Yeah, yes. I that one seemed interesting, but I couldn't figure out like what combination of like companions to buy to make the most out of that build. Yeah, I'm, I'm tr- that's like what I'm trying to figure out. But in terms of, I think, quote unquote, easy, I think Gulpy was the one that mm-hmm. I played the most. For, like, as I said, the first one to clear difficulty for with not that uh, that's Gulpy's so great. the poison one? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Not that that's some achievement, but in terms of learning the game, quote unquote learning the game, I feel mm-hmm. like I had this. That's how, that's the character I used. Mm. Uh, but yeah, Matt, who are you, which Bizarre Brigade members were you feeling? So Jaren, just like you, I also liked uh, Gulpy. The, the Poison one is the first one I cleared a uh, five with. Um, I actually don't have everybody else's name. I just know golf because you said it. But the cabbage, yeah. Jaren, um, I, I really like Jade, mm-hmm. Jade something, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jaren, that that one is so vampire survivors for me because really? of yeah, because its ability is like when you buy the cabbage, like uh, what do you call it? Where the uh, companion? You lose some HP, but now all your main character's attacks just split and when you like buy the things that give you more attacks more attack speed uh makes your stuff ricochet that is pure bullet heaven for for me okay might need to look into jade once again Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i also like the dodge cat because jaren the dodge build in this game is way too strong oh really okay yeah uh have you tried the dodge build or that I haven't. I'm, oh, okay. Again, just trying to make <laughs> Sassy Senior and Card Queen work and not having really success with any of those. Jaren, okay, I'm going to drop the dodge build for you because this is, I think, the strongest build in the game. It's so strong that in the middle of one of my sessions, 
um, my controller disconnected, and I wasn't even worried. Hot mat tips coming up for uh, Bizarre Brigade in Zelda Zone Zero. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Basically, you just buy everything that like can give you dodge until you know you're you're trying to hit the sixty percent limit. Um, the dodge cat lets you raise that limit to ninety five percent, which is basically invincibility. Yep. But um, the key item in this one is the headphones, which every time you dodge, you have a thirty percent chance to regain five HP. And that is, in essence, just giving you infinite health. Yep. Okay, Matt. Matt that's mm-hmm. crazy. That, uh, that's actually nuts. And uh-huh. I, I want to play <laughs> some Bizarre Brigade after this recording. It's so good. And then, you know, kind of on that same um, train of kind of stacking a single stat. Have you tried the snowman, Jaren? Have not. Jaren, the snowman is like one of those like two two part effects where it's like one is like oh when you're moving you have you shoot out more um bullets but the key one for me is when you're standing still you regenerate 10 percent of your health every three seconds so you're just hp stacking so you can stand still and just you know in essence again just have infinite health amazing matt matt Mm -hmm. again this is some in-depth discussion for a mini game found in another game, and I'm. Jared, it's a it. really good game inside another game. Someone like, I was reading some, just some stuff on Reddit, and some people like brought up that like I wonder if this is going to become the like Gwent equivalent of ZZZ. Where do you think MiHoYo has a future in fleshing this out and bringing it outside, or actually just even continuing to? work on it I'm, I'm hoping that the reception to it is pretty positive where similar to the survivors mode in nike you know the community uh receives it well and then they just continue even if they take it away they bring it back more fleshed out with more characters mm-hmm. more mechanics so mm-hmm. that's what so, i'm hoping for in the future I, yeah there is that like you know that kind of like minor kind of like mission for bizarre brigade or the storyline <laughs> So, Actually, you know, I wanted to ask you, does that have a conclusion? Yeah, uh, like, just, like, once you get to, like, the third day, you you just, you basically, you'll end up, like, you know, winning the event. Yes, and, but is a character hmm. added, or? No, 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 I don't, or at least I didn't see one get added. I'm hoping that that's, like, where Bizarre Brigade just keeps going, right. so that eventually, you know, the characters that they add at the end, or mention adding at the end, get added into the game. I wonder if when the event ends for real, which I believe is at our time of recording, like six or seven days, Mm -hmm. if there's going to be a conclusion, just because, you know, you do have that quick exchange with the arcade owner and Wise or Bell Mm -hmm. about, yeah, Billy's plan might not work. So maybe we'll put you in the game or something like that. Yeah. Where I'm hoping because I thought, oh, maybe I'll wait another day, but nothing actually comes out of that. So yeah, yeah. I'm hoping once the event ends, maybe we'll see an update. And, you know, hopefully new characters, new um, different modes. And I guess new characters would be the and achievements, mm-hmm. I'm guessing. Because mm-hmm. I like my rewards. But Matt, mm-hmm. any closing thoughts on Bizarre Brigade for now? Uh, no, like, I think, like, just everything. I just want more of it. I think right. it's, like, uh, a good mode. I think. Yeah, the the one takeaway I really, really want Mihoyo to look at is a way to reduce the randomness. Yeah. Because I think it's like, yeah, very unfortunate that, you know, you you basically have to fish in this game for, for items. Yeah, and I guess that's what ultimately I'm looking forward to in something, in a roguelite, in a Survivors-like game. Just something mm-hmm. to make runs a bit more consistent mm-hmm. and you know in vampire survivors that's through banishment that's through your re-rolls so i know there is a re-roll here but i feel like there are still opportunities to make more meta progressions uh just for it to continue to be a good mindless time but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. matt mm-hmm. That's Bizarre Brigade for this week. That's the Zelda Zone Zero check-in. But... Oh, wait. Sorry. Sorry, Jaren. One, one more thing What's about Zelda Zone Zero that I forgot about. Yeah. Jaren, I really like the uh, the training mode thing that they added. Oh, yes. In the... what The HIA the whatever, Academy yeah, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. 
like I think it's a really fun way for them to you know let you in essence demo new characters. Yeah, you know, try them at like a very at their like I guess like highest level and kind of experiment around with seeing how they feel with your your team of characters. So I think it was like a very smart idea for them to like you know have a progression of levels across that whole thing. And if there's something I haven't mentioned it before, but mm-hmm. you just playing through at least the first three chapters, you know, this new training aspect that they added. Um, it really, I know this is a free to play gotcha game at its core, mm-hmm. but for a casual looking in, I do think they also kind of give you a lot, not necessarily a lot, but a fair share of opportunities just to demo and try out different characters, mm-hmm. which at the very least, if you're just coming in for the story mode, uh, I appreciate it. So if you want to experience the world, I do think you can get away with just the freebies they give you. But sometimes not the lore of these character trials to force you into feeling FOMO and rolling for them is definitely real as well. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I'll eventually get to the story of uh, the new chapter and I know we were coming up for some new characters as well so gotta start saving for those Matt mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but now that we're in a anime adjacent corner Matt mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I feel like we'd be in this if we didn't talk about would you say the current one of the current hotnesses in the anime world and that, yeah. Mm-hmm. I believe it was sometime last week, available now on Crunchyroll on Netflix. Uh, Dan to Dan, mm-hmm. um, episode one. And Matt, mm-hmm. if there's one thing that I know, it's that Creepy Nuts provided another banger of a track that is mm-hmm. put up against some crazy visuals just because I originally saw previews or you know people talking about uh dan to dan previously you know when it was first announced when the trailers first came out as an anime to look forward to but i think it just seeing the op just the striking visuals and you know me matt being a sucker for characters dancing that uh-huh. was enough to sell me on at least checking out the first episode and i'm i walked away from the first episode of dan to dan with i don't know i have a positive outlook and hope for the rest of the season where it did leave a pretty strong impression on me i think as your central characters with Ayase and Ken, they're both pretty likable, in my opinion. And mm-hmm. the the mix between supernatural shonen elements and this slice, not necessarily slice of life, but teenage of romance, uh, yeah. I think is scratching a pretty good itch where... As someone, again, who didn't read the manga, I'm curious how that will be balanced moving forward. Just because based Mm -hmm. on the OP alone, uh, I think this is more so more shonen than romance. But I come Mm -hmm. to you, Matt, as someone who has read some of the manga at the very least. What were your thoughts on the first episode and what are your hopes for the season moving forward based on your experience with the manga? So, Jaren, unfortunately, this season I didn't put out a um, like anime, like anime to watch um, video on our, our YouTube channel just because like I was just really busy towards the kind of like start of the season. But that we're old, and sometimes mm-hmm. old man business gets in the way of our <laughs> fun mm-hmm. passion projects. Uh huh. Old man business and ZCZ really, really got in the way, Jaren. <laughs> fair but enough. Matt, fair enough. One of the things that I wanted to put into the uh, down to down portion of that video is that to set people on the right path of like what the show is. This show is not a battle like shonen type mm. show. Okay. I know that like the first episode really pushes it like that and it kind of like 
feels like it would be. But this is very much a comedy, slice of life romance more than it is a shonen. Okay. Um, or like the the main focus is on like you know that kind of slice of life stuff. I think the closest um, other anime that I can think of when I want to compare this show to something in terms of like how what to expect is something like uh, Fully Cooly. Hmm. I think it like falls into that same kind of balance. Like there, you know, FLCL did have a lot of like fighting in it, but the fighting was not the main focus of that show. Right. It is very much a story about, you know, the in both cases, the two main characters getting to know each other and like how their relationship progresses. And I think that like people need to to know that going in so that they don't kind of like fall off of it uh later on. Right. Or you know, kind of get like disappointed on like what it is later on in the series. I feel like that's a really good PSA to have, especially when you're dealing with anime that really does mix genres just because, Mm -hmm. again, going back to our My Dress Up Darling bag, Mm -hmm. I think with how we've said it before on this show, just that even though this is being presented at a as a romance manga, Uh, My Dress Up Darling is also a cosplay manga at heart. So Mm -hmm. when, you know, romantic progress is relatively on the slow side and takes a backseat to showing that uh, appreciation to cosplay and its culture, you know, people do end up feeling some sort of ways regarding that. Where Mm -hmm. with uh, Dadondon, I'm not even sure if I'm saying it right, but... Um, it's it's good to have that preface because now going into it that this is more so s- potentially sliding towards romantic comedy with action parts rather than an action anime with the romantic comedy elements. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. think that might push me to stick with it. But uh, again, the first episode really left a good impression on me. Striking visuals. Uh, we mm. ended up watching the dubbed version um, just because that's what started playing when we clicked it on Netflix. Uh-huh. And for the most part, I really did like the acting of, you know, I believe it's Abby Trot for Ayasi and AJ Beckles for Ken. But I think I want to go back just to see what you know the japanese uh dubbed version or yeah subbed version sounds like mm-hmm. but matt mm-hmm. you, uh, correct me if i'm wrong but you fell off the manga correct uh yeah, yeah i did based on the why you fell off do you think the anime is something you'll keep an eye on or just maybe pop in here and there i think it's going to be a pop in here and there for me jaren um okay for the most part, I don't think that Don Don is like bad. I, I, that's not why I fell off of it. I fell off of it because like, just overall, it is not a story for me. Right. Um, it is like a a good product that is something that I am just like not interested in. Okay, fair enough. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I guess this is something I'll probably check in throughout the. I guess this when is it fall season or winter season? It's it's fall season. Uh, this is the right fall now. season. Yeah. Okay. Matt, maybe mm-hmm. in light of you uh, not being able to do that, maybe we'll do a lot more anime check-ins this season just to see what's out there, uh, what could potentially be recommended. But mm-hmm. Matt, I should mm-hmm. probably preface this in episode one of the Don Don or whatever it's called. Matt, mm-hmm. uh, the scenes of Ayasi in the UFO in <laughs> yeah. her underwear. Uh-huh. Uh, watching with my partner made me <laughs> sweat a bit <laughs> and not poo pooing mm-hmm. on it. But again, as an old man, mm-hmm. maybe high schoolers in that situation, especially uh, with aliens attempting to assault her, not necessarily <laughs> my oh. cup of tea. And that's not to mention the Turbo Granny Ghost also. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> 
potentially attempting to assault our boy Ken. <laughs> Matt. Well, you know, it's it's equal opportunity harassment in, in this show, Joe. It's equal opportunity harassment, but there was a lot of me blinking my eyes and going, ooh. <laughs> mm-hmm, 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 but mm-hmm. aside uh-huh. from that, really looking forward to watching the rest of the season and watching that OP. Uh, but Matt, mm-hmm. now that we're in the anime adjacent corner, I think it's time for the main event of the episode. Ho- hopefully we can oh, keep man. it in time. But mm-hmm. this was something you discussed with our pal Rakush a few weeks ago uh, uh-huh. when I was on vacation and you were talking about uh, I believe sports games and anime adjacent sports games, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. Matt, there is a uh-huh. demo out there right now for a game that I believe oh, is man. coming out in June 2025. Yes, but your progress can carry over, and Matt, uh-huh. we're talking about Inazuma Eleven Victory Road. Matt, uh-huh. when you start this game, there's a I believe a 15th anniversary logo. And mm-hmm. I know nothing about this franchise, uh, but this is a Matt. I'm confused mm-hmm. what this game <laughs> is because Jaren? this is a soccer-based JRPG. But mm-hmm. Matt, uh-huh. the time to football when uh-huh. playing the story mode demo. Uh-huh. I'm currently, I believe, one hour twenty minutes. Yes. And the only footballs I've kicked are the collectibles. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Matt, uh-huh. how's the time to foot football for you? Jaren, I finished the demo and at two hours and eight minutes, there was no football. <laughs> Classic. No, no soccer. I'm sorry. No soccer. This is a, this is a North American podcast. <laughs> Jared, the only uh, soccer in this game is um, you have to go into like the competitive mode at the main yes. menu. So, Matt, uh huh. Speaking about e- the demo of Inazuma Eleven Victory Row, the yes. story mode, yes, and its first two hours, Matt. Yes. Mm-hmm. On paper, this is the slice of life JRPG I want to mm-hmm. play. Yeah. Just because when it takes you into your first turn based battle or active turn based battle, Mm -hmm. I think this is probably my favorite take (laughs) on a turn active turn based battle. Not in terms of mechanics, but in terms of rapping. Just because Mm -hmm. you're a student in a high school. And your turn-based battles are essentially discussions of sorts. Yes. Where you're kind of debating or just interacting with your opponents. And Mm -hmm. all your attacks are essentially ways, like things you're saying to them. And I I Mm -hmm. love that. It's really, really good, Jared. I, I like that they, you know... You know, for the people that you're attacking, all of your attacks are associated to basically rock, paper, scissors, and all of their defenses are rock, paper, scissors. So you have to, you know, match that up to get the ideal attack. Yes. Where, so it's similar to, I guess it is technically a turn based um, battle, but it's one of the active ones where when you mm-hmm. do a move with your character and I assume your party, that character goes on to cooldown and then each of the opponents have their own cooldown as well. So it's not your traditional turn-based one mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or back and forth turn-based. And as mm-hmm. Matt, you said, Matt, um, there are essentially two triangles, at not this, one triangle and one square at play mm-hmm. where your attacks are in a rock, paper, scissors I guess, formation where they can be a rock, they can be a paper, they can be scissors. And in turn, Mm. your opponent may be a rock, a paper, or a scissors. And I believe you hold one of the triggers to see which one they are. So you have to select the corresponding attack to do the most damage to them. Mm. Likewise, each move or each of your attacks, and I'm assuming your party member's attacks, will have a element attached to them. And I believe there are four elements and it, you know, goes in another 
weapon triangle, weapon square rotation of this is beats this, or at least this is more powerful against this, but th- or and then this one is more resistant to this one, and so mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. Where it is moving fast, and I'm not. You're all all the while you're building to a tension meter that allows you to do a super move at the mm-hmm. end. Mm-hmm. Uh, or at least when your attention meter is full. And that's usually some big uh, phrase or something that you're expressing where I love when you're dealing with the, you know, the disciplinary committee <laughs> and your, you know, big attack is essentially saying you're not my mom. <laughs> and yeah. you dropping that and everyone... The lights flashing, it's sensory overload, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and them falling to their knees, Matt. Uh-huh. It's a good time. But at the same time, I do love how, depending on who you're fighting, it's kind of tailored to that. Yes, I really like that. I loved the granny quests, Matt, and mm-hmm, how mm-hmm. you're essentially battling her in terms of giving her directions of, hey, mm-hmm. maybe my paper move will be showing her a map maybe my scissors move is hey i'm gonna verbally tell her where to go Uh and uh that ultimately leaves to your um you know big tension attack finishing move of hey i'm just gonna show you where to go and that yeah (laughs) i popped so hard for that oh man i really do think the story mode is charming and Mm -hmm. I could honestly play a slice of way uh, life game that just follows this dynamic. I was yeah. really impressed. I think presentation wise, as someone that loves slice of life anime, it, this was such a unique take on the battle system. And this mm-hmm. isn't even before getting to the whole soccer <laughs> aspect <laughs> of it. I just love the slice of life ness mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. this game. But Matt, mm-hmm. what did you think of the story mode demo? Jared, I, I love the story mode. I feel like okay, Jaren, as someone who's never played like the the Yakuza games, I feel yeah. like this is the school equivalent of yes. Yakuza. Like this is this is this game is to Yakuza as bully is to GTA. Yep. And this is giving big Yakuza energy. Mm-hmm. Jaren, like like you said, the I guess like the bait fights are all really good. You know, I liked you know finding the Finding the fake policeman. I don't know if you did that one. Yep, did that one. Um, I I like <laughs> Jared. I felt personally attacked when you fight against the Idol Lovers Club. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh man, I Jared. I love how anime this is. I love how ridiculous this this whole game is. Like you know, you have that like weird kraken that is just there for some reason, which. Jaren, the end of the demo, <laughs> you you fight the Kraken, and then they go to reveal what it is, and then they're like, and you and like we're gonna go jump ahead in the story. That's so good. That's good. That, that, that's a good demo. Oh God, <laughs> that's a Jaren, good demo. I gotta know what this thing is. <laughs> June twenty twenty five, Matt. Oh man, uh, Jaren, I Jaren, the the instant that you um you know. Meet the teacher. Instantly, I knew that voice, Jaren. Oh, man. Jaren, it's our girl, Sayori Hayami, you know? Classic. A.K.A. Classic. Shinobu from Demon Slayer. A.K.A. Uh, Yor from Spy Family. And, of course, Jaren, Yumiko from Kakiguru. <laughs> oh, man. Jaren, this, the story mode in this is just so much dumb fun that I I just love... I'm like in love with it. I love that you know when you kick this ball, you're you're kind of just like you know, kind of you are kicking like basically a ghost ball, and then later on in the demo they, they address that hey, it's like oh what's the main character doing? Oh he he just like kicks the air sometimes. Just ignore that. He'll he'll get over it like really quickly, and I don't know, Jaren. I I just love all the dumb goofs that this uh this game has. Matt, and story then, mm-hmm. mode is so, so charming where I think for my purposes, depending on how long it actually is, it might be worth the price of admission alone. Mm-hmm. But, you know, time will tell uh, when we do get to June 2025. But mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. that's the 
JRPG story mode side of things. Yes. But <laughs> this is a football, a soccer game at heart. Mm-hmm. And Matt, the time to <laughs> soccer, the time to football, not there in the story mode demo. So as you said, you go into mm-hmm. competitive mode. Uh-huh. And here you can go online. But of course, I went to play against bots because Matt yep. did not know what to expect. And <laughs> my first three notes yes. here on mm-hmm. competitive mode. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. One is, I don't know what's happening. Mm-hmm. Two is, no, I really don't know what's happening. <laughs> and three, no, I really don't know what's happening. Matt. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's because I, the last soccer game I played was FIFA Street way, way back then. Yeah. Football, soccer might be the world's game, Matt. Yeah. But it's not my game. And (laughs) Uh unfortunately, without having that soccer foundation, I'm already Mm -hmm. confused. Now you Uh throw in the fact that this is anime soccer. Yes. And I'm 10 times more confused with what's mm-hmm. happening. Mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. I know I cut you off a bit and I apologize, but uh-huh. there are so <laughs> many mini games. There are so many mechanics mm-hmm. where it honestly feels like a weird fighting game yes. more than a sports game. Yes, but... Jaren, this is not <laughs> a soccer game. <laughs> Matt? Mm-hmm. I understand that for a competitive scene, you need to have that dynamic of knowing the matchups, knowing the skills, knowing what beats what, knowing what's safe, what's difficult. But I sort of wished that there was something more casual to this mode that <laughs> gives you not only more time to decide on how you're trying to counter your opponent in one of these mini games, mm-hmm. but also that in that period you have that kind of rock paper scissors weapon triangle dynamic that you see in the story mode that you can also consider where i do love that so i guess at its core this becomes a weird soccer turn based mm-hmm. thing where Essentially, you know, you're playing soccer, you're running around the field, you're passing, you're shooting. But whenever you engage with someone, maybe you're trying to um, pass them, maybe you're trying to deke them out, maybe you're trying to take a shot in the goal, a mini game pops up. Mm-hmm. And then even in that mini game, you can decide what if you want to use a skill or not, where... That stuff takes away from a fast-paced nature of a sports game at its core, but I think yes. it really presents something a lot more interesting. But mm-hmm, Matt, mm-hmm. there's so much to consider with <laughs> stats when you're doing these mini games. It feels I felt I'm really overwhelmed at points. yeah. So, and again, I feel like if I had the basic foundation of knowing. You know, of just liking soccer, knowing its rules, following it, that it might be more digestible, but I, I'm kind of lost all around. But Matt, uh-huh. what did you think of the demo of Inazuma 11 Victory Roads competition mode? So, Jaren, this is, like I said, far less actual soccer than um, you, you need to be like expecting going into a quote unquote sports game. This honestly, Jaren, actually to me feels a lot like playing Mario Tennis in some mm. ways. Because um the way that the the quote unquote soccer in this game works is that, like you said, Jaren, whenever you encounter somebody, you go into a mini game. Um, when like you're trying to pass somebody, like there's like a blocker and there's somebody who's trying to like, you know, get past them. Um there is when you're uh you know, someone's coming on your goal, you're able to set up walls to to block like incoming players. And then there's the when you make a shot, you have like your power blocks. And this is in essence a game about y- 
knowing when to consume resources mm-hmm. because you know all of these things share a i can't remember the name i think it's called like an attention gauge but all of these share like the tension gauge on when you can do special moves and the special moves are just like such a huge advantage that lets you you know knock down players that you get past them for free gives you just like such a strong shot on goal to in essence break the goalies like hp bar and i don't know everything about it is so weird that i i i love it i love the over the topness of all these sports moves Jared, I don't know, like, you know, which specials you've tried, but, you know, I love me some of that steel spear. I love me some sh- uh, fire tornado. There's that dude with, like, the shadow sword, <laughs> like, thing, and the, the guy who, like, turns into a wolf and, like, dekes you out. If you're looking for, like, something that's just so quintessentially anime and so not actually soccer, this is such a good thing to look at. Yes. Where I think this demo instantly sold me on it. Where I thought this game was coming about or coming out relatively soon. Mm-hmm. And that we're in the midst of apparently the new Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is good. You oh, know, man, Metaphor yeah. Re Fantasio, uh, Silent Hill 2 remake, where there are so many games coming out, and I'm probably only going to buy one because games are expensive. Uh-huh. But. If this was coming out, you know, within this period, I probably would have tilted towards Inazuma just because, Matt, I didn't understand competition mode the first time I played it. But Mm -hmm. I ended up playing three more rounds afterwards trying to get a grasp of it. And I didn't. But (laughs) it's such a spectacle where Uh I'm really curious to see what they add to it in the final game. I know... There are aspects from what they said that hints at it will play more like a football manager or something like that Mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. an ultimate team because there are characters you can collect. So I'm really Uh curious to see what this turns out to be. But what's present in the demo, just the competition mode and the RPG story mode, I'm still in that. This Mm -hmm. this demo... Mm -hmm really left a good impression on me and Uh uh-huh i'm not really gonna look there's some information released on the game but i'm probably not gonna look into it that much but come june 2025 matt uh this is definitely something i want to add to cart Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but matt any closing thoughts on inazuma 11 victory roads demo now on steam it's a really good demo like regardless of um if you (laughs) You know, like soccer or not, I really think that just for the wackiness, you should check this out. Um, you know, if you if you like Persona, this is I think a game worth checking out because this is just like the Persona formula cranked to eleven in terms of wacky, and you know, based on the start of this demo, it starts <laughs> like a Persona game where you're not going to be playing the actual game for the first like three or four hours probably. Oh, man. But that really Mm -hmm. good impression. I love how, you know, your main character starts off with, I don't want to do, I don't want anything to do with soccer ever again. And the first thing you do is kick a a ghost soccer ball. Oh, man. Jaren, I don't know if, like, you played, like, long enough to get to, like, his motivation. But his motivation is wild. Matt, I guess I need to finish this demo. You said uh, 208, so I probably have, like, 40 more minutes left. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, definitely something I'll be looking forward mm-hmm. to. Yeah, but this is this is the most I think one of the most anime motivations I've ever seen <laughs> for an anime. Oh man, Matt! Matt I, mm-hmm. I, I sort of wish this was more basketball adjacent, but again, maybe uh-huh. that's the slam dunk game <laughs> in oh, the man. future. M- maybe I'd have a better understanding of the competition mode if it was basketball or skateboarding mm-hmm. <laughs> or break dancing maybe oh man, oh, man. If there's a break dancing game like this that would be amazing the rebuttal system would be so good oh man matt. we can only hope matt we can mm-hmm. only hope and that mm-hmm. mm-hmm. we can only hope that our friends don't match me this week Ooh. 
Because Matt, mm-hmm. I'm coming to you with this week's Don't Match Me Challenge. Uh, just how we like to end off our episodes of The Mistake Zone where we play a game. We're going to go through five categories, roughly based on something we talked about during this episode. Or maybe not. Now, mm-hmm. it, it really mm-hmm. depends what we're feeling this week. Mm-hmm. Rules are simple. We'll go through five categories. Um, and all you have to do is think of an answer that doesn't match my answer. And if you want to make it extra spicy, doesn't match uh, Matt's answer as well. Since this is a audio diary, if you don't know an answer, feel free to pause and find an answer. Uh, mm-hmm. Or think of an answer and just come back mm-hmm. to see how you fare. But Matt, mm-hmm. this week's Don't Match Me Challenge actually revolves around what you brought to the table earlier in this episode. Uh, And this will be flavor adjacent, let's just say. Mm. Uh, Based on your experiences with the Oreo Coca-Cola and the (laughs) strawberry milkshake Frosted Uh Flakes. And Matt, this Mm -hmm. might be pretty general, but sometimes they all can't be uh, super hard. And sometimes people just want to have a good time. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Not this might be a casual uh, don't match me, but we shall see. But Matt, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. let's start off with the most broad, the most general. You had strawberry milkshake frost flakes. So mm-hmm. let's start off again, pretty simple. Name a milkshake flavor. Name Ooh. any ma- milkshake flavor. And I know, Matt, let's, uh-huh. let's be honest. A milkshake is you taking ice cream and milk and blending that all together. So there might be something local. Uh, there might be something general. So go crazy. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. name any milkshake flavor in five, four, three, two, one. Matt, mm-hmm. I went with orange creamsicle. Ooh. Jaren, you know, I just went with the standard vanilla milkshake. Classic, Matt. Classic. Jaren, I am legitimately surprised you didn't go for your classic shamrock shake. Matt, mm-hmm. I initially thought, Matt, I'm looking at my don't match me right now. It does say shamrock shake here, but <laughs> switched right at the last minute. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. people, tried to catch people off guard. But mm-hmm. Matt, mm-hmm. speaking of the strawberry flavored frosted flakes, uh, mm-hmm. now that we're looking at cereal, Matt, mm-hmm. again... Just name any cereal mascot. Just name Ooh, mascot. Any, okay. Name any character that has dawned on your cereal boxes growing up. And this might be a tricky one. Uh just because Matt, let's face mm. it. A lot of athletes on those weedy boxes, but Ooh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we'll see. But Matt and friends, name a cereal mascot in five, four, three two one Matt Mm -hmm. I went with Sugar Bear ooh Jaren I followed my nose to Toucan Sam (laughs) classic Matt another classic Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Matt Mm -hmm. now that we're talking about cereal one more one more Mm -hmm. Matt this might be more uh, geared to us in North America but who knows if this is worldwide but Matt Mm -hmm. name any Cheerios flavor. Ooh. Name any Cheerios flavor, whether it be regular or even one of their limited edition ones. Mm-hmm. But just name any variant of Cheerios. In five, four, three, two, one. Matt? Mm-hmm. I went with the limited edition chocolate strawberry Cheerios. Oh, I didn't even know that existed. It's less chocolatey and less strawberry than you think it would be. Oh, <laughs> it's actually really less strawberry than you think it would be. No, yeah. uh, Jaren, I went with the apple cinnamon Cheerios. Another classic, Matt. Mm-hmm. Another classic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Matt, mm-hmm. there was one other product you tried this uh, episode. Yes. So, yes. might as well, Matt. Mm-hmm. And friends, name an Oreo flavor or variant. Ooh, okay. I thought so, you were going to say Coke. So, Matt, there's mm-hmm. a lot of different Oreos. Just name one of those Oreos. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, In five, four, three, two, one, Matt Mm -hmm. had to go with double stuffed. Ooh, Jaren, I went with, you know, the thing that I couldn't get for this cross promotion, the Coke Oreo. Ooh, good call, Matt. Good mm-hmm. pull, good pull. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that, uh-huh. uh, you let the cat out of the bag. But to end <laughs> off, mm-hmm. name a Coke flavor or variant. Ooh. Name any Coke, Coke, Coca-Cola flavor or variant in five, four, three, two, one. Matt, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if you and friends said Diet Coke, Lime, you're Ooh. <laughs> Jared, I went with the cherry coke. Oh, Matt. Mm-hmm. Love me some cherry coke. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. that's the flavor town. <laughs> uh don't match me challenge for this week. You know, oh, man. been on the easier side, but Matt <laughs> at our old age, sometimes you just want something easy. And sometimes you want a cherry coke. And a shamrock shake. Maybe not at the same time, but mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe a few hours after you had some Reese's Puff cereal. Oh, or no. Crave. Not, <laughs> Crave's <laughs> just candy. That's not real cereal. <laughs> I can't believe Crave used to be advertised as, like, you know, the healthy, like, you know, athlete cereal. That's Literally insane. Just filled with chocolate. <laughs> that Crave isn't real breakfast. That's a snack. Uh-huh. I say that as someone with Crave in their cupboard right now. Oh, man. Matt, Mm -hmm. we... I apologize. A bit beefier episode (laughs) than we're used to. Or maybe we are used to. Well, you know, Jared, we really had to dig into Bizarre Brigade for this one. (laughs) Matt, Mm -hmm. before we go, Mm -hmm. you mentioned uh, her name. And Matt... Mm -hmm. I know eventually we'll have to <laughs> do this, but when it comes to the Mistake Zone Hall of Fame, uh-huh. is Sayori Hayami our first ballad Hall of Famer? Oh, 100%, Jaren. 100%. <laughs> oh, man. That, that mm. might be something we need to consider for our end of the year episodes moving forward. <laughs> Who is in the Mistake Zone Hall of Fame? We'll make a mental note of that. But oh, man. for now, I want to thank you, as always, Matt, for joining me this week, for editing this podcast, and partaking in some delicious limited edition flavors. Yo, thanks, Jaren. As always, I want to, you know, thank you for hosting this episode, bringing us our Don't Match Me this week, and, you know, jamming with me on a probably way too long segment of uh bizarre brigade (laughs) thanks man uh matt who should we think real quick gotta think earplugs gotta think Mm -hmm. self-care gotta think looking out for yourself gotta think uh that ringing in my ear that's ever present (laughs) uh what matt i want to thank uh the bizarre brigades Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i want to thank sassy seniors matt i want to thank uh People name Otaku Kun. That's pretty good. That was pretty good, Matt. Classic. That uh, was classic. pretty good. Mm-hmm. Matt, just uh-huh. give Ayasi her clothes back. That's all I yeah, ask. Yeah. You know, uh, Jared, I also want to throw um, some additional thanks out there to Jared, you know, not sponsored, fanatical.com. Because uh, right now they have 13% off on Metaphor Refantasio. They have like 20% off on, um, what do you call it? <laughs> Monster Hunter Wilds pre order. Matt, got to hit up, is there a deal? Because I, I still have that in the back of my mind. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Want to... Matt went mm-hmm. to a lot of hobby shops, did see some reasonably priced uh, copies of Silent... Like the original Silent Hill 2, where I have that itch, Matt, of playing the remake and the original side by side. Uh, just because I believe the original is around 8, seven eight nine hours and this remake is around 14 15 16 so Mm, curious mm -hmm. to see how they play side by side but matt Mm -hmm. uh metaphor real soon i think this week at the time of recording yes jaren i'm still uh, debating on how i want to get this game might might be a metaphor week Uh in the upcoming weeks matt but 
Sorry, Sorry. just one more thing on that metaphor of Fantasio buying. If you haven't bought it yet and you're planning on buying it, like I said, um, it is discounted on fanatical.com if you're going to pre order it. Not but, sponsored, by the way. <laughs> not sponsored, but also not sponsored. You can get it on the. If you are subscribed to the Humble Monthly Bundle, you get like a 20% off coupon for a metaphor re Fantasio. And if you buy. <laughs> The the monthly bundle or subscribe to the monthly bundle and then buy Metaphor Refantasio, it still comes out to being less than just buying Metaphor Refantasio straight. Pretty good if you want. I don't know what's in this month's bundle other than Persona 5 Strikers, which I, I should probably play Persona 5 Yeah, I think Strikers. that's the big game. There was another game I wanted to play in there. I think it's called like uh, Station to Station. Hmm. Um, oh, it has Remnant 2. It has Jusant, Domekeeper, Jack Move, Remnant Records, and McPixel 3. Yeah, and again, not sponsored, but I always check out is there any deal dot com uh, just to see you know what licensed uh, websites are or licensed retailers uh, are selling a bit cheaper uh, Steam copies of games. Where you know, looking right now, what's trending? Silent Hill Two, Green Man Gaming. Uh, 72 Canadian, Dragon Ball, Sparkling Zero from Fanatical, 82. Uh, game Valet, eighty two for Metaphor, and that Stardew Valley, uh, oh. eight fifty on Steam. <laughs> wow! So <laughs> I don't know, Matt. It, it, it's mm-hmm. rough out there. Got to save where you can. So mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Ho- hopefully, they're licensed, trusted vendors. Of course, we not don't mm-hmm. want to buy any uh, <laughs> games keys that were bought using stolen credit cards. Big no no. Mm-hmm. Big no, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but ho- hopefully where you buy is trusted like i trust my boy matt alba so matt mm-hmm. while we figure out what to play and talk about next week uh mm-hmm. please take it away this has been the mistake zone and we're all out of the student council trying to be our moms <laughs> so good <laughs> <laughs>